Good morning, folks. We've got a slate of can't-miss news stories this morning. We've got news from the North and South Poles and off throughout the galaxy. We're starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last 24 hours about as quiet as they have been. Even as we await the return of sunspots, however, the coronal holes have been present across the disk. We took a solar wind intensification from one of them over the last day. Purple plasma speed rising up there on the right side of the chart. The stream did crack 500 kilometers per second this morning. It's a middle-of-the-road telemetry, producing a middle-of-the-road geomagnetic instability last night, but which didn't last long. The largest earthquake of the last day was a 6.2 that followed numerous blood echoes in Indonesia. But the most important rumbles happened in the western USA. Utah with the largest earthquake in 20 years and another above average on the coastline. Eyes open here and to the east as the strong system moves on. And that system here, regardless of what happens to the ground, is going to be that multi-season assault from the sky that we mentioned before. We'll have the severe front line drop intense weather while inches to feet of snow drop in various locations to the west of the convergence line. Eyes open today and through tomorrow. Let's go ahead and begin with the imagination. Folks, the background on this is two parts. First, there is the famous black hole image they released last year. And second, is the debunking of that image by Dr. Robitaille in numerous papers and which he made a few special videos about on his channel, Sky Scholar. Here, the scientists doubled down on their methodology, suggesting improvements can be made to the detail. Now, while the animation is beautiful, and I'm sure their math is too, every single aspect of the model is guessed. Their paper is up as well, and boy, it would be great if Dr. Robitaille could demonstrate where all these Harvard, Princeton, and NASA scientists went so wrong. Now to something equally amazing, but this time wholly true. For those who don't know, we're nine years past the discovery of ice at the poles of Mercury, and what's new today is the confirmation of their formation mechanism. It's star water indeed. The lack of a strong field at Mercury means that the solar wind directly interacts with the surface, in which giant magnetic proton tornadoes cause heating and stirring of the chemistry, allowing water vapor to form and dissociate from other particles in the atmosphere, floating then to the polar region, cooling and dropping into craters that never see the sun, where they are left to freeze forever. Star water. Let's come back to Earth here for a paper that gets most of the facts right and most of the implications wrong. First, in this analysis of the Antarctic ice mass, where the red arrows show which graph matches to which part of the land, one can't help but notice they picked all of the melting zones preferentially. The ice gain zones in blue are much larger, just as strong, and that one really red region is, in fact, where all those underwater volcanoes were shown to be erupting and melting the ice. The graphs in total tell one story, but when you go look at the cherry picking of locations, you begin to scratch your head. Up in Greenland, they have the same sort of setup here, but they don't need to cherry pick. While the central and eastern Greenland region is getting snowier, icier, and gaining mass, the western coast of Greenland is melting faster than anywhere else in the world. The issue is that this is the place in the world where heating causes the most counteraction from the planet. Not only does cold freshwater melt chill the oceans, but right here is where the water feeds directly into the Atlantic currents. That whole day after tomorrow ice age thing? Yeah, that's right there. We're off to find the warped, wavy central electric field in a new planet system, and the amazing thing is how they did it. While the system sits face on from our perspective, the returns indicate varying height amplitudes compared to the sheet around the system plane. Just a little reminder that whether it's the sun, the galaxy, a model in a lab, or a baby star, the field warps, waves, ripples, and undulates. And veteran observers can just take that right into our next story. They've analyzed nova remnants from throughout the galaxy and found something peculiar. The bipolar remnants all seem to have a preferred orientation. Were it not for seeing the impossible like this mock the majority of the last few years' studies on this topic, I'd say it's impossible. At least it is unless there is truly an interconnected information system that builds and deconstructs the galaxies. Every star on the waveguide that is triggered the same way, triggers the same way. Those are not coincidences to ignore. This ultra-long period recurrent nova concept gets stronger every single day. Now, folks, we greatly appreciate your support, and of course, our sun falls into that ultra-long period recurrent nova category. The entire playlist on that can be found in the description box below the video. We've got your wind map forecast and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. 
eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.